Anyone else wants to come in? Of course, they can. Uh, you guys can hear me okay this way? All right, good. Uh, thanks for coming. I want to talk a little bit about Veracity, uh, which uh, is a new open source DBCS that we have uh, just released. We just started calling it 1.0 on Monday, uh, which I uh, will admit was a great relief. We've been doing this for a very long time. I believe my, my first code or first line of code on this project was written uh, three and a half years ago. So we've been pacing along for quite a while, and it's uh, it's great to be able to stop telling people not to use it. So we're uh, we're excited. Um, I want to. Uh, I want to answer what I anticipate, several questions that I keep getting about veracity. Um, and uh, the first one is, why another DBCS? This is probably the most common question I get by email, uh, by Twitter, by in our booth uh, over there at the Expo Hall. This is just a really common question. And what I have learned as I get this question is that there are two different questions within it. And we're getting a little bit better at this, at understanding which question are they really asking. There are two. One of them is, what is different about veracity? This is the person that they're familiar with Mercurial or Git, and they want to just, they just want to know what's different, which is a perfectly valid question. I'm going to answer that question in a couple of minutes. The other question is, Eric, you clueless idiot, what recreational pharmaceutical were you smoking when you decided to build yet another DBCS that has no chance of survival? Because Git is one, and all the other tools will eventually be crushed under the weight of the awesomeness of Torvalds and his disciples. <laughs> I paraphrase a little, but nonetheless, this is the other meaning of the question. That, that sometimes people, when they come and ask me, why another BBCS, this is exactly what they mean. So I'm going to actually answer this question first, if no one minds. And as I go forward with the next few slides, if you're a Git fan, but please know that I am a Git fan as well. I say these things with all the love in my heart. We, we are, you know, I, I admire Linus Torvalds and I, I, I really appreciate his work. But honestly, sometimes when I talk to Git fans, I just, you know, I just want to say, dude, you got to get on more. So I'm going to say a couple things that are just kind of speaking the truth here. So here's a Venn diagram. <laughs> and so, like I said, I mean, there's just, there's just a little bit of reality I want, I want to bring to the discussion when I talk to, to Git fans. Not all of them, but sometimes I just, like I said, you got to get out more. So, um, let me do a little brief history review of version control tools. Um, there have been what I call three generations of version control tools. And I uh, am old enough to have used the first generation. And every, I actually ran into a, a person or two here at the conference who also did it. Uh, my first version control tool was RCS. And uh, this, was, this was the first generation. It started roughly 1972 when SCCS came out. And RCS came out a bit later. And it had no networking. And it was all single file operations. And you know this was, this was great stuff in its day. But this generation is largely, largely past us. The second generation is the centralized tools. Um, I would probably say CBS might be the first example of this. You know, there's some debate about that. But nonetheless, CBS was really popular. Subversion replaced it and became really popular. There are 10 more tools I could list here. I stopped there. But the second generation um, was really where version control took off. And then there's the third generation. We call this distributed version control. And the examples here are obvious. You know, the Git, Mercurial, our own new offering is, is something we're trying to make part of the story. But um, Arch, Monotone, you know, there's all kinds of examples here. And the third generation has been going on for several years. So the first thing to observe is that the generations overlap. I honestly talked to a guy yesterday who's still using RCS. And after I talked to him, I realized he's probably using the right tool for the job. Uh, I didn't even realize RCS is still on my laptop until I mistyped VI last week and typed CI, and all of a sudden I was checking files in. <laughs> this, the RCS is old, but the generations overlap. The second generation is huge still. It, it's, I mean, the second generation of version control is mainstream. There are more subversion users on the planet than, than almost any other version control tool. I would say than any other. 
Um, DBCS right now has all the bugs, but honestly, it's not mainstream yet. All the people making the most noise are using it, but all the quiet people are still using second generation tools. So this is my you are here slide. Um, market adoptions always go this way, where you have the early adopters, they start first, and then all of the, I mean, the bulk of the users are in this majority, the back part of the curve in the middle. And whether we like it or not, we DBCS fans are on the left side. We're still there. If you believe that the majority of programmers in the world are using a DBCS right now, you need to get out more. It, this, that is an illusion. The number of people using Subversion and Perforce and Clearcase and, and I can go on and on, it's just stunning how many people are still using those tools. Regardless of what you think about Subversion, um, the first step to getting out more is to ignore what Linus said in his YouTube video where he, I don't even remember the language, but I see, we've all seen the video probably if you're, if you're a Git fan. Um, it's something about subversion being crap and so forth. And the reality is, it's still the most popular version control tool in the world. And uh, there are good reasons for that. It's not a bad tool. It's not a third generation tool. It's, a, it's to some extent, the last wave of technology before this one. But it's not a bad tool. Um, I, we actually spent a fair amount of our time in the booth this week doing therapy for subversion users, because they come in and they're like, all the kid people told me I'm an idiot because I'm still using Subversion. I was like, you know, it's okay. You know? <laughs> Man, I should charge 175 for an hour for this. It's okay. <laughs> How do you feel about this? Um, so, really, I mean, Subversion's a fine tool, and uh, we, as DBCS fans, have a lot of work to do to catch up with the success that it has enjoyed. So, the really short answer to that person who um, Ask me why another DBCS? My answer is because the third generation of version control is not over. It just started. There is more to do. Lots of interesting things are going to happen. We are probably not the last new DBCS to join the, the, the crowd. And I hope we're not. Because I think there's more innovation to come in this wave. So that's my answer to the first to the first person. My answer to the other question, what's different about veracity? Um, and I want to start right off by saying that I prefer the language of what's different than to say, here's why veracity is better than Mercurial, or here's why veracity is better than Git. I don't really like the comparisons of what's better than something else. They're too simplistic for me. They're, things are just different. So for example, I drive a Ford F-150. Uh, it has a 157-inch wheelbase and a V8 engine, and uh, a full back seat and a six and a half foot bed. And I just really like my truck. My coworker, John Woolley, drives a BMW motorcycle. And the interesting question is, well, whose vehicle is better? Well, I mean, we both drive to work in our vehicles. They're both vehicles. Surely we can decide which one's better. And I just think it's too simplistic a question. I'm pretty sure that next time Champagne has another winter blizzard, my vehicle is better. I'm pretty sure that John Woolley doesn't spend two minutes every morning trying to park his motorcycle, because I, which is what I have to do with a backup camera and trying to get between the, the lines that are too narrow. Uh, his vehicle is faster. My vehicle is faster while towing a 9,000 pound trailer. I mean, there's, there are different applications. So. Um, Let's talk, when we talk about these kinds of things, let's talk about what's different as opposed to so much what's better. And in some cases, I'm going to talk about things about veracity that are different that may mean it's certainly not better for you or for a kid user or for whatever. But we think it's different. <clears throat> First difference. Veracity is all open source under the Apache license, not the GTL. Um, for some people, this is an issue. In fact, I would argue that one of the reasons that Mercurial and Git have not made as big of a penetration into the corporate world as they have made into the community open source world is the GPL. The GPL has created some problems, and I'm not saying that nobody can work around them, but the fact is there are some things that people would like to do in terms of integration, in terms of customization of deployment, 
that brings up fears about the GPL. Some of those fears aren't even valid, but they drive markets. So uh, that's one difference that we have, and one reason why we think that uh, veracity might have a place in the story as DBCS penetrates the corporate world more and more. Uh, one difference that you may or may not like, but I think I should acknowledge it, is that right now, veracity is what I call commercial open source, not community open source. And this is, you know, this is the, uh, the clear example of where better is not necessarily the adjective to use. Uh, Git Mercurial were created um, as community developed projects when there was that big falling out between BitKeeper and uh, the Linux kernel community. And that was what they were created for. Um, Veracity was created with a different purpose. So far, Veracity has been developed entirely by people who are employed, employed by SourceGear. It is not a community developed project, at least not right now. And that's not to say we will not accept patches in the future. We want to be a part of the community, but we didn't start this project to get the community to write our software for us. Um, and we didn't start this project with the purpose of creating something that would be the, the community open source version control tool. Um, so, we, uh, that's, a, that's a big difference. Uh, one question that we do get asked often though is when will you accept patches? And the truth is, we will do this, in all likelihood we will do this once we have a patch we really want. <laughs> we haven't gotten to that point. I think the very first patch that was submitted to us was someone who said, well, this won't compile on my platform, so I created a patch to turn off all the compiler warnings. <laughs> and they submitted it to us. Our response was, well, we had them on for a reason. So um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to think about that patch for later. But um, no question, when somebody creates a patch we really want, I will make sure that we do the homework to, to be able to accept patches and do it properly. 